everyone's just having some fun. My gosh, can't a girl have some fun around here? Just to enjoy herself. I remember that song. I don't know if you remember that song, but I know you're going to pretend like you never know that song. But anyway, welcome to Ruby's Red. So, it's International Women's Season. Yes, it is. And we're here and we're going to be talking about some of the great women that have gone past. But I want to first start. Women, we are flying right now. We are doing it. We are. I mean, it is good times. When I think of what we have done, I mean, people are getting awards. I see women just rising and shining and doing just awesome, amazing things. So as we're celebrating International Women's Season, I say IWS, International Women's Season, I'm celebrating the women and it says, you know, that it's meant to be an International Women's Day. What? A Women's Day? No, I don't think so. All right, then week. An International Women's Week? We should be celebrated every single day. But unfortunately, sometimes being a woman is a thankless task. And as my friend Tamika said, do me a favor. Come on. What is International Women's Day really all about? So International Women's Day is celebrated by women all over the world to commemorate our achievements. And it's meant to be about the political history and social equality of women that is celebrated every year on the 8th of March. So when did this all begin? Well, the seeds were first sown in its event when it was in 1908, when about 15,000 women marched through New York City demanding shorter working hours. They were not only marching for shorter working hours, but increase of pay and the right to vote. There was a price to pay for that, a serious price. And it was a process of the suffragette movement. To which out of this, more and more women's events, social clubs, events, groups, functions, and all sorts of things, gatherings, and that's all good. But I'm saying that every day should be an international women's season. Why? Some of us are never appreciated, but I want to say, I appreciate you. We appreciate you. And sometimes I'm afraid to say it's a thankless task being a woman. Yes, but we can. <laughs> yes, but when I reflect back and I'm really thinking about women that have gone before us, like Emily Pankhurst, and you know, she was obviously the equal rights woman for the political activists for women's rights, and Rosa Parks, who was in the civil rights movement, and she was refusing to give up her seat. When I think of people like Rosaline Franklin, who was the one that was responsible for the molecular structure of the DNA. She found some rich, rich sources of information. And Lady Diana, which is the princess of the world, and what she contributed in her own way. And May Caroline, what's her name? May Carol Jameson, who was the first black American woman to go off into the moon and into space. Now, I wanted to talk to these women, who are not here, by the way, and say, look, you know, as they are flying and shining, you know, to do and be what they were, if they were to look at us today, what would they think? If they were to look at us and to see us celebrate, and I'm sure they would celebrate with us. As I was thinking, and I remember hearing a story, um, Chimamanda Adechi talked about, um, she had a speech the other day, and she talked about women giving. And she said that we were conditioned to give. And yes, we are conditioned to give. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, you know, so much of us, it, was it nurture nature? It was nurture, that we're nurtured to give. So some of our cultures have groomed us and our societies have groomed us to give. But, you know, the Bible says, freely you give and freely you receive. And I think as women, we must learn to take. So I've got a few pointers that have come from these women that I've picked for International Women's Season. What would they actually have said to us? What, what would each one of them have said to us? One learn to receive. So when try someone is trying to give you something, someone's trying to bless you because you've done something really nice for them, learn to receive. I myself have found it difficult to receive because I'm a giver. I've been conditioned to give and I know it, I'm aware of it. It's one of my things that I do, it's one of my patterns. But I'm trying to learn to receive in this season. So I'm saying to you, learn to receive because you deserve it. Number two, Emmeline Pankhurst. She wants to say to us, you have a voice, use it. 
She would say, I died for you to have a voice. Have your voice, have your say. Why? Because they made choices that allow us today to have a voice. Some countries around the world, some women cannot have a voice. Some women can't even drive a car. Some women, you know, for even speaking out or even looking like how I look today will be stoned to death. So I'm saying, have your voice. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. What are you doing with your privilege? Number three, Rosaline Franklin, the woman that was responsible for the molecular structure of the DNA in one of her, you know, in her, in her sightings anyway. She found out, what would she say? I would say to her, I would say that she says that in your life, learn to understand your DNA, learn to understand your past, learn to understand your generation so that you, your past, so that you can move forward and make a difference. Lady Diana, Oh my gosh, let's not forget the, the princess of the world. She was kind, she was compassionate, she was graceful. She was a person that was, you know, had human kindness and grace. And sometimes as when we're moving as women, we can be so strong in trying to achieve, we're so strong and become like a bull. <laughs> no, seriously, like a bull. And we lack grace and we lack sensitivity and we lack just kindness sometimes, even one to another. So number five, they call her the apostle of love. That's what they call her, Mother Teresa. Now she's given a quote. She says, it's not how much you love, but it's how much you put into what you love in what you do. Something like that. Yeah, that's so true. So I would say, don't take love out of anything you're doing. Now, number six, Rosa Parks. Be your authentic self. Every day you have an opportunity to be you. So show up, take your seat and play your part and be the agent of change in your region, in your sphere. Caroline May Jamison. Now she was a woman that first went to the moon. So what would she say? She would say, stop hiding in the shadows, be visible, but reach for the stars. So these women made an impact in our world, you know, and as the famous sign their signature on the Hollywood Boulevard, these women sign their signature across the skies of the universe as they literally made a marking, an indelible mark into the canvas of history. Yeah, that sounded good actually. <laughs> anyway, collectively, they all shared their wishes. And they said that they wanted to say to us, if they had things that they wished that they could have done, they would have said, I wish I had made more friends of diversity. I wish that I could have touched more women. I wish I could touch more lives in general. I wished I could have gone past the moon. Hey! I wish I could have shared knowledge I wish I could have shared more to women and men. I wish that I could have loved myself more. See what I'm recognizing, I think it's all about the love to be honest. But as I'm thinking about what they, what I believe that their wishes would be if they were looking at us today, let's remember the other women that are around the world in situations in different countries around the world that don't have the same privilege or the same rights as us, that some of them can't vote, some of their dignity is taken away from them. I want to pray for those women around the countries, around the world that are in situations that really we are blessed and privileged. And as I said before, what are we doing with our privilege? When I think of all the women that have gone before us and I think of those women that still don't have their voices and still don't have a say and still young girls that are being taken and married at a young age. Some don't have sanitary towels in some countries. Some girls that are sexual slaves, some girls you know, it's awful things that are happening in different countries. Women that don't have rights or have a voice in their own families, you know, are not having the freedom to drive a car or, or simple things. So I just want us to just think about those women as we're celebrating. Yeah. 
So Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for these women in different countries around the world, in some parts of Africa, in Asia, in India, some parts, Lord God, of the country, Lord God, that do not have, Lord God, the opportunities that we have. I pray, Lord God, in that we will be a voice for those women. Raise up women, Lord God, that will be be a strength it from their own countries come out with their own voices to let it be heard that other women will connect with them around the world so that their voice will not be silenced their voice will not lord god heavenly father their voice will not be quenched lord god i pray lord god that you oh god make the impossible possible i pray for change in our governments around the world i pray for the united nations lord god that they lord god will lord god do lord god what they say Lord God when these women are crying out for help Lord God that they will be an agent of change Lord God to reach those women to change laws in their countries to give women's rights Lord God in countries and in cultures and in religions Lord God where it is a right a human right for women to be able to be Lord God I'm praying Lord God in this season that you raise up voices around the world Lord God that will be a beacon of light and hope Lord God that they will access the young girls Lord God that they will be fighters and warriors for their country Lord God just to have a voice just to have a say I'm praying Lord God you are God and we say God make a way out of no way like only you can Lord God Heavenly Father you say in your word my people perish for lack of knowledge and we're praying Lord God for the knowledge Lord God and the truth to be revealed out of every country Lord God as women are being courageous with their voices I pray that they lift up a standard Lord God and cry out Lord God that you've given them a voice Lord God those that have privilege use their privilege for something greater than themselves you said the purpose is greater than the person so I pray that the purpose rise up Lord God out of the ashes rise up Lord God in places Lord God in dark places shine a light Lord God that they will be seen Lord God I pray that you send help Lord God where those that are crying out Lord God for a way out for someone to notice for someone to see them and even those Lord God that are around us that are silenced in their homes Lord God Heavenly Father we're praying Lord God that you be the agent of change to operate through us Lord God that we will be a channel of visitation Lord God that we are able to expose Lord God God, the darkness and shine the light Lord God in the name of Jesus we say God have your way and I pray Lord God that love bind us together with cords that cannot be broken Heavenly Father let your love continually radiate amongst us women gather us together in unity in oneness Lord God let us be each other's sisters keeper Lord God that we are able as as a nation Lord God Heavenly Father Lord God if we lift you up Lord God that you would draw Lord God but we're praying Lord God that a nation will safely trust because we have the wisdom Lord God the wisdom to do the wisdom to act the wi wisdom to nurture the wisdom to build the wisdom to grow so we're praying Lord God love for these women around the world we're praying Lord God that they're noticed in Jesus name in Jesus name we have prayed amen so international women's season <clears throat> Let's think about those around the world. Ciao. All right, it's Ruby's Red. Enjoy your celebrations. Ciao for now. <laughs>